Welcome to the DK Custom Products video channel. My name is Kevin, this is Dwayne, and today we're going to talk about front suspension. And to be more specific, the most substantial front suspension upgrade you can do per dollar spent, because we know there are some just some extravagant suspension upgrades you can do out there. Custom fork cartridges, you know, inverted this and that, and asymmetric, you know, hydra, all this and that. Well, uh, what if I told you for $200, you could get damn near the same end result? And that's with the Intimidators. And I've had $1,400 suspension mm -hmm. on my trikes, yeah. and I've had $200 suspension on my right. trikes, and the $200 suspension, the Intimidators we're talking about, are... Right. 80% as good as the $1,400 ones. Right. And, and the thing so. about a Harley, front suspension, no matter what, there's always so much room for improvement. So the idea behind the intimidator valves is they basically optimize the valving, optimize the rebound damping, and make it a more plush, uh, more responsive suspension system. We have a comparison report we've done on all on most of the popular front suspension. We'll put that down in the link below. And there's charts, so you can go look at which bike you have right. and how the Intimidator valves compare. They're not the best. You can get better suspension. You can't get better suspension for 200 bucks. Not so. at all. Not at all. We have four people here at DK Custom Products who their job is to answer emails, answer texts, answer phone calls. And we asked them to let us know what are the most common questions that they get regarding intimidators. So let's just go through these really quick. Um, do I need to upgrade my springs with my intimidators? Uh, the answer is no, you don't have to. We installed the intimidators on this bike with the stock springs. Now say you do want to upgrade the springs because you will supplement the results if you do upgrade the springs. I would say overall, 90% of the improvement will come from the Intimidators, but if you want to bring that on home, you know, to get the absolute best, you would upgrade the springs. And also, you know, the springs don't last forever. You know, you, you tend to not notice that degradation over time. So you may be due for springs. So yeah. if you're going to buy springs, why buy stock springs? Yeah. <laughs> 7,500,000 miles, that spring material is going to fatigue a little or not. Right, right. So you, you may well. be due for, for a replacement, and when you're doing a replacement, do an upgrade. Another factor though, is maybe you're looking for a significantly more aggressive ride or a more sporty feel. And we offer spring options for that. The Race Tech Springs, great option if you're looking for a more performance, uh, aggressive feel that you cannot get out of the factory springs. Yeah, and I, I put Intimidators in four or five of my bikes. And on one of them, I wanted to have the more aggressive feel. And yeah. I did put the Race Tech Springs in. All the rest of them, I'd run the factory springs. Right. Okay, the next question is, what amount should I put on my preload spacer? Yeah. So as you've seen, Nathan elected to cut some length off of his spacer just for a slightly more plush ride quality. Um, now, if you're doing aftermarket springs, you just follow the instructions that come with the aftermarket springs as far as uh, preload spacer. Because they'll tell you something like, you know, measure to the threads and then add this. So the intimidators won't really be a factor in those measurements but they need to be taken, they need to be in place when you do the measurement. Right, I mean, the basic rule of thumb is if it's not too harsh or not too plush, not too soft and wallowy, before you put the intimidators in, mm -hmm. put them in, cut off a half inch to five eighths of an right. inch for the spacer, because that's how thick the intimidators are, yeah. and you'll be exactly where you started. If you need it to have more, if you, if you're, like when we did Mitch's Sportster, and he's a little on the heavy side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we didn't cut any off because nope. he it was a little too soft for him for his weight. Right. Conversely, if you are 140 pounds and it's just too stiff, you want to cut on, not only the five eighths off to make up for the intimidator, but maybe another half inch on top of that to make it a little softer. Right, right. Line. Because what we're talking about here is, is fine tuning the results of what's otherwise a one size fits all because you know this bike in stock form had this length spacer didn't matter if it had a 500 pound guy on it or a 200 pound guy they had the same spacer right. so, don't, so don't put too much thought into that but if you're looking for a slightly plusher ride quality cut about a half inch off it's that simple yeah. people ask what weight fork fluid the weight fork fluid is real simple for the 39 millimeter and the 41 millimeter mm -hmm. it's five weight right for the 49 millimeter which is what this is it's 10 weight 
when you order from us, we will give you the appropriate weight fluid for whichever intimidator you're That's right. You're now, now, if you prefer to pick up your own fluid, uh, we do detail what weight fluid is required, not recommended, required in the instructions. Yeah. Or you can give us a call and we can clarify for you. But if you're going to pick up your own fluid, use a premium for it fluid. Don't pick up what the dealership has. You want those anti-shearing properties because, you know, the valving that the yeah. fluid is pushing itself through. You don't want the cheap fluid in there. You don't want the factory fluid. You want something like Maxima, Redline, something like that. It's a premium yeah. fluid. So how much fork fluid? Refer to your manual. Right. You and can measure how much came out in the suit. But then you have to assume that the right amount was in there to begin with. Right. It's better to refer to your manual. That's right. The, the intimidator does not change fluid capacity or how much you're supposed to run. The intimidator, you know, the valves inside fill up with fluid. They don't take up that much volume. Yeah. That much fluid Just volume. The same fluid that you've been running. Yeah. Uh, same amount of fluid. Correct. That you've been running. Um, do you sell them for Indians? We sell them in a 39 millimeter, 41 and 49 millimeter, and they set on top of a damper rod. If you have a spring and damper rod fork that is in that diameter, they will work for you and we sell them for you. We have a lot of people that ride Indians that use these. You can check the Indian forums and see a lot of people that they talk about these. And uh, there's been a rash of Indian buyers pick these up lately. So short answer is yes, assuming you have 39, 41 or 49 millimeter forks. <laughs> How difficult are they to install on a non-fairing bike? Super, super easy. Yep. On a fairing bike, not difficult, just takes a little bit longer. Uh, another question that comes up, people ask, do you have to adjust them? And I think the, the genesis, why people ask that, is because there's another company that makes what's called a gold valve emulator. And the gold valve emulator requires you to drill holes in your damper rod, and you also have to adjust. They're not dynamically adjusted. The gold right. valve emulator is not dynamically adjusting and so you have to drill holes put different shims in there fiddle around with it you don't have to do that with with this at all Correct. you literally drop them in put the fluid in put it back together put it back put the forks back on the bike and that's it right. there is no uh, adjustment necessary they're dynamically that's adjusting right. they're, they're so dynamically adjusting that you take a sportster that has 41 millimeter forks and you take a bagger with 41 millimeter forks they get the exact same intimidator valve and they work equally well, even though there's a few hundred pound difference between those models. Right. A lot of people call and say, hey, you know, I saw that these intimidators are a Rikor suspension product. Right. And um, I heard about them from you, but I decided I want to buy them straight from Rikor. I went to Rikor and they're not in business anymore. What's the deal with that? Well, we bought the rights to the intimidator valve technology uh, because for we've carried these for about eight to 10 years now and we love them. They work great. We don't offer anything that we don't run in our own bike. So our customers love them. So we couldn't stand to see them go away. So we had to uh, acquire the rights. And now DK Custom is now the manufacturer of the intimidator valves. And this is the only right core product we make. So if you guys have, we get a lot of questions. Hey, I noticed you have these from Rycor, do you have that from Rycor? No, we don't have anything from Rycor except for the intimidator valves. Made for Harleys. We don't have them for the BMWs, the Ducatis, or anything like that. Right, so Kevin mentioned earlier that uh, testing report we've done, well, we've tested a, a $1,200 plus dollar custom fork cartridge set and uh, all the way down to just basic drop-in springs. And Kevin did all of those tests, so are, are these really a viable option or a viable alternative to those custom fork cartridges. Well, I've run the AK-20s, which yeah. are $1,200, $1,400 yeah. uh, in my uh, Ultra Tri-Glide, and they were very good. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to run them again in my next Tri-Glide, so I put the Intimidators in. They're like 80% as good. Right. I mean, they're almost as good for 200 bucks. They're almost as good as the $1,200 right. items. Now, I'm not racing with it, you know, maybe right. that extra 20% when you're on a track racing, you know, will it, be worth it'll it make, to you. That would make the difference when everybody else has those. <laughs> but but to spend an extra 1000 to $1,200 to get that last 20% right. improvement, no. I'm very, very happy with them. And of course, you can look when you go to the product page, which is in the description below, you can see yeah. all the reviews of people who've installed them. 
That's and right. That's right. And, and, and that and that twelve hundred dollars suspension is just half the equation on your motorcycle suspension. Like I mentioned earlier, the next gen shocks in the rear with the intimidator valves up front is an overall better combination than anything out there. I don't care if you put whatever brand shocks on the rear and you have that twelve hundred dollars setup in the front. The overall suspension won't be quite as good as what this bike is set up with now. So wrapping it up, if you have changed your front suspension, put down in the comments below what you changed it to and how happy or unhappy you are with it. Right, right. How, maybe how much you spent on it. <laughs> and yeah. uh, just let us know what you're running. Let us know what you're thinking about running. And make sure you go, if you've not spent the money yet, make sure you go to that test report that we put in the description below before you go spending your uh, green on something that might not be yeah. give you the results that you're looking for. That's right. Now, we, we did go over some of our more frequently asked questions, but if you have any questions at all, leave us a comment below or shoot me an email to support at dkcustomproducts.com or hey, give us a call 662-252-8828. We have an entire customer service team ready to help you out. Y'all ride safe out there.